Okay, this is the start of chapter 18, Introduction to Acids and Bases. So we're going to identify some physical and chemical properties of acids and bases, classify them as acidic, acidic, basic, or neutral, and mostly we're going to compare these models, the Arrhenius model, Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis model of acids and bases. Okay, so we're going to go over all this vocabulary, and the main idea here is that different models help describe the behavior of acids and bases. Acids taste sour, so your sour balls have acid in them. Um, probably citric acid is in there. Uh, bases taste bitter and feel slippery, they're kind of like soap. Acids and bases are good conductors of electricity. Acids and bases can be identified by the reaction with some metals and metal carbonates. Okay, so acids turn blue litmus paper red. Bases turn red litmus paper blue. Magnesium and zinc react with acids to produce hydrogen gas. So that's how we can tell that there it's an acid or not. And we can figure out geologists use um, hydrochloric acid to see if we have limestone, if calcium carbonate is limestone, that reacts with the uh, hydrochloric acid to produce carbon dioxide. Okay. All water solutions contain H plus ions and hydroxide ions, right? The water is a polar molecule and actually pulls some of its own molecules apart into its different ions. Not that many, but it does have H plus and OH ions. When it's acidic, we say that it's, there's more, the concentration of hydrogen ions is greater than the concentration of hydroxide. So it has more H plus, less OH. Basic is the opposite. More hydroxide, more OHs, and less H ions. Okay, so water is the usual solvent for water. Water is a neutral solution, right? It produces equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. The neutral, the concentrations are equal. This is the ionization equation for water. This hydroxide, hydronium, I mean, is as H3O plus. It's called the hydronium ion. We also use the H plus interchangeably with the hydronium ion. It's used um, an awful lot to these two are pretty much interchangeable, although this is, I guess, more technically accurate, but we use this, and also we use the fact that this H plus ion, hydrogen is just like a proton and an electron, right? So if it loses an electron, all we have left is the proton. So oftentimes this is called, this H plus ion is called the proton. This little chart down here shows if it's more, acid, more hydrogen ions, it's an acid. If it's got more OH ions, it's a base. The Arrhenius model um, states that an acid is a substance that contains hydrogen and ionizes to produce hydrogen ions. Okay. The base has a hydroxide group, has an OH, and dissociates to produce a hydroxide ion. So a lot of the bases that, and acids and bases that we use in this class, the Arrhenius model is okay. Okay, so a couple of Arrhenius models are like hydrogen chloride. It's got the acid, it's got the H here, ionizes produce, produce hydrogen ions. Uh, sodium hydroxide is, is the base, right? It produces OH ions. So those are perfect models for the Arrhenius model. But not all acids and bases go with that. The more inclusive one, the one that has more acids and bases, is the Bronsted-Lowry one. And this is how we, the one we're going to use the most in this class, where we think of an acid as a hydrogen ion donor, a proton donor, and base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. It's a proton acceptor. Okay? That's the one we're going to use the most. And we're going to deal with these conjugate acids and conjugate bases and conjugate acids acid-base pairs. Okay, so this is nothing more than um, when the equation, we have an uh, equilibrium equation, right? We have an acid and base, and they form some products, right? So those products on the right side of the equation react and go back and form the reactants. Okay, so when they do that, they become conjugate acids and conjugate bases. And I'll show you what I mean when I do that on this next slides here. So fluorine, hydrogen fluoride uh, from the uh, 
Breaking Bad um, made famous here is an acid, right? Hydrogen fluoride is an acid. It combines with water. It makes the hydronium ion and the F plus, F negative ion. So HF is the acid. That's the one that donates the hydrogen. H2O is the base. That's the one that accepts the hydrogen. So in this case, on the left side, this is the acid because it donates that hydrogen ion. The base is the water because it accepts that hydrogen ion. Okay, so the conjugate part is if we look at the right side of this equation, this hydronium ion has going to the left, when this reaction goes to the left, this donates a hydrogen ion. So that becomes an acid. So this becomes the conjugate acid. This accepts that hydrogen ion. So that's the base, a conjugate base. The way you can remember it is that if it's acid on the left, it's the opposite thing on the right. So if it's an acid on the left, it's going to be a conjugate base on the right. If it's a base on the right, I mean on the left, it's going to be a conjugate acid on the right. Okay, so it's a little model down here showing how those atoms move around. Okay, so Bronsted-Lowry base. So we look at this equation on this side. We have ammonia plus water. Okay, so the ammonia over here, it accepts another, it goes from NH3 to NH4 with a positive charge. So it accepted a hydrogen ion. The water gave up one of its H2Hs and became a hydrogen ion donor. So in this case, the NH3 is the base because it accepted a hydrogen ion and water is the acid because it gave up the H um, ion. On the right side, you know, whatever was the base now becomes the acid, the conjugate acid. Whatever was the acid now becomes the conjugate base. Now, water is one of these substances that can act as a base or an acid or a base. It's amphoteric. So just have to remember that term that water is amphoteric. It can be either an acid or a base. So we're going to identify acid, conjugate acid base pairs here because it's a new concept and I want to go over some of these terms here. So this is the same equation we just had, but I've changed it around so that now we have this NH4, the ammonium ion on the left, and OH on the right. So wherever you see OH, especially when it's on the left side of this equation, it's almost always a base. So that means if you see an OH here, that's a base, then that NH4 has got to be an acid. Okay, so that's the acid, that's the base. So if this is the acid, when it comes to the other side here, the NH3, that's going to be the base. Going to on the left, when this reaction goes to the left, this is a hydrogen acceptor. That's what a base is. So that's going to be the conjugate base. And the water is a proton donor, a hydrogen ion donor. That's going to be the conjugate acid. Okay, so conjugate acid, conjugate bases. Going from the left side of the equation, they're, they're the acids and bases on the right side of the equation that came, that were made when this acid and base reacted with water. So they're conjugated from this reaction. So that's, I guess that's where that term comes from. Okay, so now we look at this one. So it's a good guess that HBr is going to be the acid. It's got the H there on this side. It doesn't have an H, so it lost the hydrogen. So that means that's going to be the acid. So if that's the acid, then the water's got to be the base. Okay. So if it's acid on the left, it's going to be a conjugate base on the, on the right. So what did this become? It became the Br. So that's going to be the conjugate base. The water became the, the H3+, plus, so it's going to become... The, it was a base, so that's going to be the conjugate acid. So bases, acids, become conjugate bases. Bases become conjugate acids. Okay, so they switch. When they go from the left to the right, they go from whatever they were, acid, then they become the conjugate base. If it's a base, then it becomes a conjugate acid. Okay, so in this one. What happens to the uh, carbonate? Does it gain a hydrogen or lose a hydrogen? So we look over here, it gained a hydrogen. So that makes something that accepts a hydrogen ion, that's going to be the base. So what did the water do? It gave up a hydrogen, so that's going to be the acid. 
Okay, so we usually you don't get complacent and think that the acids are always the first one and the bases are always the second one. A lot of times it is, but it's not always. Okay, so the acid is water in this case, and the base is the carbonate ion. So if that's the acid, the conjugate base is going to be, what did the water become? It became the OH. So that's going to be the conjugate base. What did the carbonate become? It became the HCO3. That's going to be the conjugate acid. Okay, so acids that can only donate one hydrogen ion are monoprotic. Mono, one, protic, proton, one proton. All right, so the couple of examples here, acetic acid and hydrogen fluoride. Okay, acids that can donate more than one hydrogen ion are polyprotic. They have more than one hydrogen. The most famous one is sulfuric acid with the two H2SO4, monopolyprotic acid. Okay, so if you're really um, having trouble sleeping tonight, you can go through this little table here of some common acids and their conjugate bases. It's fascinating reading. Okay, so the last thing we're going to touch on here is the Lewis model. The Lewis model is an acid, it has an acid being an electron pair acceptor and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. So we're not going to really use that one too much in this class, even though it's a more inclusive model. It includes everything that the brownstead lowrys do and many others that the brownstead lowrys don't. But it's not that we're not using it that much in this class. The brownstead lowry one is the one we're going to use the most and get the uh, most benefit out of that model of acids and bases. So that's it for this video. Um, answer the questions below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in class.